Hey, welcome back to another video. My name is Blake. This is Merch Campus, a channel all about Merch by Amazon. And Happy New Year. We've just cracked into 2019. First off, I want to say thank you very much if you've been watching my videos and you found them helpful. So today I want to talk a little bit about the 30-day accelerator program that I mentioned a few videos back. And the evolution of that is basically I, I realized that 30 days would be too long for anyone to stick to something, myself included. I think it's about 12 days most people can stick to something. So I shrunk it to seven days, so the seven-day boot camp. But then what happened now that the Q4 rush has ended, and I had a good December, I made like $12,000, but when I'm seeing the real impact now of Cyber Monday, and if you don't know what happened is, most of my best sellers lost their ranking on Cyber Monday because they were from 2017, and now they've stopped selling, uh, even though I tried to boost them with ads and everything. I'm seeing the real impact, and my account really got crippled, I would say. So I don't feel very comfortable charging for a, a program or a course when my account isn't doing so well. It feels a bit unethical if you don't practice what you preach. So what I'm do instead is I'm going to outline in this video what the seven day program was going to look like because you know I prepared all the information I just didn't launch it so so that's what this video is about it's going to kind of condense what the seven day program was going to look like so that you know you're not missing out on any information uh, and also hopefully that in any of these steps there's one little bit that might be useful to you because even though you might know some already some of the strategies you never know like one of the days you're like oh I never thought of that so hopefully that's that's kind of like the goal with this video so without further ado let's crack into what I had planned. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically, I'm going to walk you through the, the seven day idea, uh, because I like the idea of like a system and a kind of a predictable formula that always I think is a good idea. Let's start with day one and then we'll walk through the days and then we'll tie it into doing a bit of stuff. Day one, I really encourage you to think a lot about the strategy that you're going to employ. Uh, with merch. And it really comes down to a number of things, your preference, life situation, do you have a lot of time on your hands, also how much capital do you have, how much cash do you have to spend, can you outsource, can you run ads, things like that. I'm just going to outline a few of the different st strategic paths that you can take with merch by Amazon. And the first one really is, that I think is a, is a good option for people, is, is the holiday seasonal path where you're jumping on these holiday trends because that's where a lot of organic traffic is clustered around and it's a good way to kind of pick up some sales because you don't have to really run ads because there's so many people visiting Amazon around that niche and you can also do cool things like intersecting like a lot of people haven't exhausted the holiday with an intersect for example Valentine's Day is coming up that's a holiday right it's a seasonal trend for example you would take a niche like gaming and you link it up to Valentine's Day and I, I saw a shirt last year that did just that it had two controllers for like the boyfriend girlfriend Valentine's Day thing and that's called an intersect so you're intersecting a core niche anything here like take even like reading with Valentine's Day. So that's kind of like one strategy. And I know someone who absolutely crushes it five figure months just doing this strategy. So I, I think it's a good idea. And that links to news and trends where you're jumping on a news event or a, a trend where it's easy to pick up sales because there's so much organic traffic that's looking for that specific design. All right, so that's one of the strategies that you can employ. Now, what my account was doing was more evergreen. And evergreen, I would upload in niches like you know, hobbies or jobs or food or animals, something which can sell you around. It's not linked to a trend or an event or anything. And the growth of the account is, is slower and gradual as opposed to the, the peaks, the peaks and dips of the holiday and, and seasonal method. But it's, it's a good way to build a steady base of cash flow. And it, it's what was working for me up until the recent Cyber Monday situation. Another one is called more in terms of the local business agency style is local merch, where you're leveraging your merch by Amazon account to partner up with local businesses and to offer some kind of royalty structure. And I don't know too much about it, but Mike Gual uh, is kind of the legend around this style. And he has a course on it. So, you know, if you're more interested in that, you could check that out. But he's pulling in some absolutely killer months, like hundreds of thousands a month. It's kind of unbelievable, actually. <laughs> All right, so another method is called licensing. And licensing is, as far as I'm aware, where you create a business structure and a deal with uh, a brand that has this in, this IP and they allow you to create designs around that IP. Let's take Rick and Morty, the TV show. You get officially licensed to create designs for that brand. And I believe that you probably have some kind of royalty structure where you split the royalties with them. And I'm sure there's a bit more of a legal hurdle to get into licensing, but uh, it can be great because you're tapping into an existing audience and brand and you don't really have to drive uh, traffic around that. So that's another method. I believe Ken Real does that a little bit. I don't know a lot about it as well. Another thing that I did, which is great if you're in the lower tiers is, so I would reach out to YouTube channels which have anywhere from 10,000 up to 100,000 subscribers because a lot of them are not monetizing their audience very well and I would offer them to make t-shirts for their channel around some catchphrase or something and the same thing applied for like Facebook groups and they would keep all the royalties. The thing is it's always good to get sales on your account even if you're not getting royalties, particularly in the early tiers where 
it's so important to get as many slots as you can, especially because what I mentioned in day seven, where you're kind of repurposing to other platforms, you want as many slots as you can. And a great way to do that is to make a compelling offer to let's say a YouTube channel is like, Hey, listen, I'll make a design for you and your audience for free. You get all the royalties. I'm just interested in getting sales and so on and so forth. And the same idea is you can partner with nonprofits to do the same thing where you say, Hey, listen, you know, there'll be no really no upfront cost for these t-shirts and you can raise funds as long as you don't write on the listing in Amazon that it's for charity or donations. Uh, it's a great way to get some sales into your account. So the whole idea of day one is to kind of get a 30,000 foot view, as they say, the, the big picture view of what strategy and direction are we trying to take. So hopefully that was, that was interesting. And now, now we proceed to day two in light of what we learned in day one. So now day two is about research. And what I've done here, for example, is I just gathered a ton of niches using a variety of, of methods. And these, these aren't even all, this is just from a few of the methods. So there's so many like ways to get niches. And this is some of the primary ones. And and this is why I recommend you use Merchantformer, pretty much the one software that I would use if, if I had to have one software for Merch by Amazon. One of the big things I started using recently is the, is the trademark checker before I submit to live. So before I'm publishing my design, I quickly do a trademark check in the back end. I think you can only do that if you have the Merchantformer subscription and it, it'll tell me if, the, if it flags any trademark. So I know exactly like if I push this to Amazon, because Amazon's pretty much doing the exact same thing with the bot. It's crawling your listing to, to see any keywords. And just that alone is ah, so valuable. So if you don't have Merchant Former, highly recommend it. There's a link in the description. You can get it with a 20% off. I use it at the core of all these, this research. So let's jump into this. The first one I do is Merch Hunter, and that's here. And what I, what I plug into the keywords is basically negative keywords. So I have these. So I actually sub subtract birthday and Christmas from the listing because pretty much every design that is kind of learning about SEO is trying to put in birthday and Christmas. And so by su subtracting these keywords, I'm pulling up a series of results from people who are selling the shirts, but that are not obsessed with optimizing for the SEO. So these are the people who are kind of selling in much more interesting niches that at least that pop up to me. I, I kind of subtract certain brands for them. And this is a growing list that you could just add. I'll basically plug that into Merch Hunter, right? And pull up the price range. Just a little bit. And then when you search that, you pull up kind of a different thing, right? All these people that have not optimized for those keywords or brands don't get pulled up. And so this is a great way to get a lot of niches. And I would also subtract Fortnite. So it's a growing list of brands, right? So then you go minus Fortnite to not see those. So that's just one. That's a great way you crawl that. You can check out a thousand niches. And all we're doing in day two is aggregating uh, tons of niche ideas. Another thing I do is go into the movers and shakers module, again, in Merge Informer and you can plow through daily, weekly, monthly. So in total, 1500 different shirts to get niche ideas from. And a general practice in general is you, in general is you want to, uh, to make it almost like a habit to just see what is selling on the platform. And also the niche research is not limited to Merch Informer or, or Amazon. You can branch out to other platforms. For example, uh, you go to Etsy, uh, you go to Redbubble and then all the other print on demand sites as well, right? And then you have Wanello, which is a good one I use and wish.com. These are all examples. Um, and you can also use the keyword tool. There's, there's so many ways to get niches. It's almost an infinite amount of ways. And I'll just show you another one. For example, if you go to Amazon and you just do that, GIF four, and it, it pulls out all the niches that you could do, right? So here, like this is not a niche that I'm in forensic pathologist. I would write that as a niche, right? So that's, that's another method that you could use. If you go to Etsy, and you just click that and it tells you like what is trending right now. Like already we could see Easter, Mardi Gras, St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's are like the core holidays that of all the Etsy shirts searches right now, those are the popular ones. So that's another way to see like where are people searching and what, what's their interest in. And the whole goal here is just to aggregate tons and tons of niche idea. Like I said, there's just an infinite amount of ways you can do that. So once you have a ton of niches, what I like to do is day three is called niche selection. So we have to decide like what niches are we actually going to go into and create designs for and get, generate ideas for and generate keywords for and pursue, right? And to fan up the niche in our, the amount of hooks that we have in that market. And so that's called niche selection. In many ways, it's gonna be trial and error. Really good to take action in merch, which means just to put up things and see what sells. Of course, you could do it in as educated a way as possible. And that's why it's important to have a lot of slots so you can do that testing. But the general concept here is you wanna be meeting demand and not creating demand. So the idea here is if you go on the product search and you plug in, let's say, a niche that you had, like sailing. What I'm looking for is generally an average BSR that is under 2 million, because I want it to set, sell at least a few times a month in, in the niche, right? So that's a, just a general rule of thumb. And you also want to see that there are some results in Amazon in that market that are selling. So there's an existing market. So another point is if you want to kind of build a brand, which is always recommended around a core niche, for example, a mom, 
brand. This is way too broad. So for the niche research, you would be intersecting. So you have the core niche. So you have mom, that's the pillar. And then, for example, here you have hunting. So moms that love hunting, that would be like one niche that you pursue. Or moms, sarcastic mom shirts. Or moms that love bears, so animal mom shirts, right? Or moms that are into sports, so sport mom shirts. And then you, you dig deeper into the sport mom shirts. So moms that do, you know, hockey or even more like obscure sports, like pickleball or whatever it is, right? So that's what I recommend. If you take a broad niche, mom, cat, uh, uncle, you want to intersect it. It increases the chance of you actually making a sale. So that's the general idea of niche selection. So then the next thing is idea generation. The core idea is we're trying to generate, and as you can see, I generate a lot of, a lot of ideas here. Uh, it's very easy to generate ideas using this method. So I use this, this template, which is this blank, and then you do shirt, mug, card, quote, joke, pun, sing. Let me just show you an example. If we go into Google and you write, for example, funny engineer mug, you get tons of ideas that you could use on t-shirts. Right? You can also do this with card. All of a sudden you have tons of ideas that you can use on t-shirts. You could do this with quotes. As you can see, all the things that I had here, right? All of these are great t-shirt ideas. And the key here with idea generation is two things. One, you want to make sure that you're checking for trademarks, always key, and copyright infringement. But another one is I would actually check on Amazon.com to see if there's already an existing idea that we found, right? So this is Google, but I also recommend you do it on Etsy and then on Pinterest. So those are the three things. And then you plug in these different things, so funny engineer sayings, and then you get these ideas. And the great thing about this is also easy to put on shirts. It's a low barrier to entry because you just write some cool text. Right? It doesn't really require high level illustration though. The higher quality it is, probably the better you will do. Another thing I wanna point out, the more unique offering that you can create in that niche, let's say you're carving out an idea of like dads who are engineers. So that's your, the niche that you wanna dominate you want to give as many unique offerings to that market as possible because that's going to increase the chances of you making sales and, and dominating the niche. Because if you only have the same version on, on a hoodie, on a long sleeve, on a premium shirt, on a pop socket, just the same quote, that's not options really for the customer. You want unique designs. And so if, for example, this little thing already is, exists on Amazon, I won't upload it because the consumers already have that option. You wanna give them unique options. So that's kind of like the core principle behind idea generation. It's so easy to get tons of ideas just using Pinterest, Etsy, Google, and plug in these templates. So hopefully that's useful. So now we proceed to day five, and this is design. Again, this is kind of rel relative to your situation. If you have cash and you already have a designer, that's great. Uh, if you have some design skills, that's great. If you don't have design skills, you don't have cash, you may have to learn how to design. And that's kind of part of the growth curve that happens when a lot of people enter Merch Amazon. So I can basically use Photoshop now. Not amazing, but enough to get stuff done. And so I'd recommend learning, you know, Photoshop or GIMP or Illustrator. You know, there's a guy who absolutely crushes it now, but in the beginning he had no clue of how to design. And he had to teach himself GIMP through free YouTube videos. And now he designs all this stuff and has five bigger months. You can outsource it and I recommend Upwork. There's a great uh, article about that. Merch Informer does just type Merge Informer Upwork in Google, It'll, you'll read it. Online jobs is where I, I actually had a lot of my designers from. The thing is now they're getting very expensive. I think they're like 70 bucks a month just so you can access their freelancers, so it's a bit absurd. Another great one for beginners, and it's again why I recommend Merge Informer. So if you don't have it, Merch Designer Tool. So the Merch Designer Tool, the great thing about it is all you really need is a graphic and a font, right? That's at the core of like basic level design, at least to enter in the early tiers. If you wanna get more high end and you wanna build out a brand, you could do that and I recommend it. But in the beginning, all this is, is a font and this is a graphic, right? And you mash it up and you get a kind of a classic merch shirt. So for fonts, I just recommend defont.com. This is how you would find commercially usable fonts. You click top, more options, public domain, 100% free, submit. All of these are commercially usable fonts, lots of rows here, right? So you can just find something that is interesting to you. You download it and you upload it into the merch designer and voila, you have that font. As for the graphics, you can like, buy graphic bundles, you can like buy high quality graphic if you're thinking about a niche, like say the thing I said before, like dad engineers, you get like an engineer graphic, whatever that is, it's high, high quality, you just repurpose it for a lot of different designs because it's a high quality graphic. Uh, and then you can also go to the kind of classic websites like Open Clip Art or Pixabay, though just be a bit cautious because a lot of people are, are using that. There could be uh, copycat issues in the future. So that's at the heart of it. Uh, and it's very easy to use this. That's for the design aspect. We've decided what strategy we're going after, did a bit of research, we've selected the niche, we've generated ideas, and now we're busting out designs. The next thing we do is keywords. You go to amazon.com, let's say you're doing like the horse niche. These are all keywords you'd kind of want to include 
in your listing. Of course, look at them and see if they're relevant to your thing, but the Amazon auto suggests gives you a wealth of, you go like funny horse and just see what comes up. That's amazon.com. Another one is the merch. If you just write horse, plug it in and it'll pull up the, the most used keywords here. You know, it should say equestrian horseback in shirts that are selling. So it validates which keywords are functioning. That's a pretty good one. I would also consider using related words is good. Let's say you type in engineer, if that's your niche. All of these are potential keywords you can get into. Another good one I recommend is just using like Google. You can see in Google, it's giving you here like it's the study of electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism, which are just keywords that maybe I didn't think before to include in my listing. You know, if someone's searching for, you know, funny shirts about electronics or electricity, all of a sudden you would rank for that. Maybe you wouldn't have before. So that's a good one. Keywordtool.io, it's a great one. It's the same principle as the Amazon auto suggest, but it just gives you more things. So if you write gift for horse and you plug it in, it'll spit out a ton of keyword ideas. And that's all about keywords. And the great thing that we're doing is if we bulk upload niches, it helps to have all the core keywords uh, together. So it makes uploading easier. And another thing is I recommend that you switch up keywords with every listing because you don't want merch to think that you're just uploading duplicate listings because then it won't serve all those to customers. Because remember, it wants to give customers options. And so if you have a variety of different keywords that are relative to different designs, it ties into the fact that you're offering different unique designs. It's increasing the chances of you making a sale. And also when you make a sale on a shirt to notice what keywords did the trick and then to maybe employ those in other shirts. We went through the six days and now we're in day seven. The key idea here is I call day seven biz, biz dev, business development. And so we have, we have some niches, we have some designs and some keywords. And the first thing I recommend is you just repurpose them to other print on demand uh, sites. So big one is Etsy. Just link up Etsy to Printful and you can again read a great article on that Merch Informer. Just Google Merch Informer Printful Etsy and just read that and it shows you how to set it up. I made like a few thousand dollars with Etsy just in December. I only have like a few hundred shirts up there relative to thousands of merch. You can repurpose these designs that you already have onto other websites. I have a friend who put his merch catalog on Redbubble and does not touch Redbubble anymore and it makes him hundreds of dollars a month. That's truly passive stuff. Repurpose to other print on demand sites because you already have the raw materials. Another thing to do, go deep, not wide. So like once you sell a shirt, you've identified a niche that's sold. So I recommend at that point, because you started out wide, you're hitting up multiple niches, now go deep. So if you sold an engineering shirt, go deep into engineering and start to dominate that space. And the way you do that is uploading good, unique designs with targeted keywords. Another thing you can do is, is ads. So I highly recommend AAS, Amazon Advertising Services. At the bottom of your dashboard, whenever you get the code, sign up for that because it's becoming more important than ever to give your shirts an initial boost. Competing for organic searches is, is getting harder. And so if you can get anything to get the first few sales, which are the hardest to get, uh, it's quite important. So I recommend you run some ads as well. Another thing you can do is, and this ties back into why we want a lot of slots, take what you have and then put them on the UK or the Germany platforms. And just keep in mind that the trademark slight differentiation, the trademark laws in Europe, England and Germany is a bit different to the US. So you'd want to recheck for trademarks and that's called the biz dev or booster things. And, and so basically you spent the last six days, you know, getting niches and designs and keywords. And then once you've uploaded them to merch, there's all these ways that you can kind of boost it. And you, the way you boost it is like with ads or you upload it to UK and Germany or upload it to other print on demand platforms. This wise thing to do is to go deep not wide once you sell and to basically take over or fatten the niche in that regard. Now, another thing I want to point out the idea that um, this thing called scalable designs, and I always recommend people to do this. And Michael Essek did a great thing recently in Christmas where he talked about certain templates that are very scalable. And so I encourage you to always keep a lookout for scalable designs. So one of the things that you see in Halloween that was very successful is the phrase it was, this is my human costume. I'm really, uh, and then you fill in the blank and it was like, and it fill in like any animal or, or passion or something. That's called a scalable template, right? For example, this one, Opera Nerd, it's a very basic one, but you would just plug in anything else instead of Opera and that's a scalable template, right? Here, this is my blank shirt. You can plug in anything into the blank that's like a weird hobby, like an archery or backgammon, things like that. And so I always encourage you to think a little bit in terms of the idea generation thing. What core templates can you plug into, for example, I saw this, this is in dog hairs, German Shepherd glitter. Okay, so this works for dogs because it's sold. So what other animals could I cross over to? So one would be like horses. So this, this isn't, you know, horse hair, it's then you put in the specific breed of horse glitter. So, so that template works and you want to bring it a unique design to other things, right? So I encourage you to think a little bit of that. For example, this, you could just plug that out for all the different nationalities. So whenever something sells, notice, oh, can I cross purposes to other niches? 
uh, and scale it out. So that's also something I wanted to add. Hopefully that was a useful summary of what I had planned in the seven day program. And there was, there was some little nugget that you could take out of here and implement in your business. That was the goal of this video. And I apologize again for not putting out the, the 30 day accelerator program. But at the end of the day, this is kind of it. This was what I'd, I'd crunched into this video, what I would planned to do in the 30 days. And I think there's enough information here for you to kind of get some ideas and get started on how to approach 2019. So again, I want to say thank you very much. If you've been watching these videos, it means a lot to me. And I hope that 2019 goes well. And again, like I'm starting in a way from the beginning after that, that thing happened with my account. I hope to just kind of put out useful merch videos here and there throughout the year. All right. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if that was helpful. Take care. Talk soon.